Allegiance roster. It's pretty European, to be honest. I guess... I mean, that's what people are running. I, I don't know at what point we stop naming matters after their regions as things become more and more synchronized globally. Ryoma coming through on MTS. Beast running Wonder Woman. Rest running Lumber. Sleepy running Tulin. And Rocker on the Violet. Just chipping away. No real opportunities for a gank on either side, although FX might have bitten off more than he could chew. He's pulled in by the lasso. Nice timing by Beast. Rest. He has the cutoff. Rocker's coming in as well for the execute. There is first blood. And PCP may have hung around a little bit too long. Rocker, though, wisely. He's absolutely a, an incredible jungle violet player. KO may have been caught out, though. Rest waiting in the bush. I was able to attack him quite low. I like that magnetic storm. Spending it now just as a zoning tool. Lean through for this Mike Golem. Surely they're not going for that contest. And indeed they're not. Instead they're trying to pick off this overextended Omen. And Beast will be 1v2ing here though. So surely he'll fall back. In the meantime, there's the Death's Embrace. Popped up top. Rest is in trouble. He finds a two-man Earth Splitter though. And Sleepy's coming through. There's the Thunderbird. There's the Ion Blasts. So tanking tower after tower in the top lane. They might be able to catch out this Omen again. The Spectral Iron will come through. Death's Embrace to stall things out, but there will be an Earth Splitter. He does get away. Nice use of it. Oh no, the Wailing Blade! 17 to 11,000 in gold, and here's a double Earth Splitter to look for more. Tulin's Thunderbird will come through. Magnetic Storm does tag up rest. A ton. King's Glory finds one. PTPK able to finally stall up the chase. Finally, maybe, put a barrier in front of the snowball that is threatening to roll down their entire team. They've got this Omen further forward is kind of a scout. FX will join. Double Earth Splitter though stalls up their plans. Rest may be in trouble. As the rest of the teams here, you can see MTS and this Omen are having a duel in the meantime. This means Sleepy's a 1v3, but they're just running from them. <laughs> Sleepy scares off the entire team. They're completely uninterested in taking the fight, and this means Rocker is free reign. FX knocked very low. Thunderbird will come through. Unable to connect, but MTS finds the kill onto FX. This tower with being down in an AOV game. Sleepy will push in earth splitter won't find anything that's a good start for the oriental gods and they've got fx chewing away as well this is actually going in their favor as the king's glory comes through as well rest is very low rocker only kept alive by their team's healing but the first and second kills still go in favor of allegiance sleepy i don't think allegiance is gonna allow them to survive that long Rocker certainly agrees with you. Big damage coming through already. Chaos Grip and Nirvana. King's Glory as well. None of them are enough to stem the flow of Allegiance players pouring into this base. But they don't have any of the towers. <laughs> They're trapped now. They don't have any of the towers nor the HP to properly leave. Finally, they get the mid-level high ground. FX has regen to max in the meantime. But I don't know what he can do to hold this lane. It's all on the Omen to really find the damage. And he's stalled out the middle of all of them. And I think that's it. FX, what can you do but stand there and watch? 14 to 1. That's not special effects. So, what I'm curious about is that did Allegiance purposely ban that from FX on that first game? Or is there something I just don't know here? Because they did ban Kirknack on the first game. Uh, I mean, I assume they were just more worried about the Tulin going against them, because the Tulin's that powerful, right? Um, so if you have two characters, say a Tulin and Kirknack, and you're equally worried about both of them, maybe even slightly more worried about the Tulin, but you have first pick. Oh, came with a double side. This makes things interesting. Oh, FX is angry. You just stole his jungle camp and he's got backup as well. There's Death's Embrace coming through. This could be brutal because Sleepy's caught out. The site pulls him ever deeper in and KO finds first blood. It's a knockout. Rocker and Rest are trying to get involved as well and FX has peeked into the wrong bush, the wrong neighborhood. He'll take a ton of damage but his Scythe pulls them all in as well. The Chargonar of KO will just chew into their HP. It's not enough though. The trading is even thus far. I try. He is level 6 already and I'm pretty sure they're going to go for this Abyssal Dragon right now. 
Well, FX will open up the fighting. They've already tagged the dragon. They'll be going in as hard as they can. Death's Embrace catches to the rest. You're in big trouble. The problem is, that's a hard dive from KO as well. And he's finding big damage. The trading's even so far, but FX is picking up kill after kill. PTP will try and go in and with the... Oh, with the Dark Dominion, he picks up two. But I don't think he's the HP to make this work. They have the player advantage, but not the players on site. It's only the Zuka Dive and Beast takes the boat out. Gold is pretty even on the board, even with Allegiance losing the Abyssal Dragon. Who it'll be picked up early, Allegiance. They got not the Abyssal, but they found two instantly there with the Wind Blades. Rocker, like you said, are just going to keep hard pushing this. And this means that, that there almost constantly needs to be a rotate on a hand. Death's Embrace will be spent. There's the lasso to engage. This is dangerous now because you've just engaged with the lasso, but it doesn't matter. Beast again stands in the middle of three enemy players and just takes the fight. And the kills, I think, tell the story as well. Along with the map control, big trouble here. Death's Embrace again spent early, and again the Omen will be caught out. This is what I was talking about. They need to basically dedicate somebody to defending this top lane, and they haven't. Instead, they're engaging one by one, and well, the result is as predictable as you'd expect. KO will finally come through. They need to trade these kills, and with the Chaos Protection, will will do exactly that or not? Beast is still stranding strong. I don't understand how or why, but he finds an extra kill, and KO is actually up for grabs. Beast, surely not. He He's able to dodge the power surge and returns for three, four kills in that top lane. So this is like communication we're talking about. Like they're going in one after another and dying immediately. Yes. And you can see that happening again here as PTP leaves in alone. Now they've got the Zuka's backup, but he needs to get out of there because he's fighting a 1v3 or 1v4. This team will be out with the Chaos Protection. That's KO to lead. Just stalling back the fight. KO, you're in trouble. The split push does claim a tower. That's top lane. KO, though, will eat a tornado. The Chaos Protection's not enough to allow him to escape. He's got no HP. Windblades is barely enough not to get him. Mid bot, or sorry, top lane, this tower will fall. Rest is very low. FX, though, with the hard commit, tries to find a trade and is unable to do so. But Oriental Gods are able to make this interesting. Earth Splinter will come through. Beast is caught out, but he doesn't care. Allegiance is Beast just picking up kill after kill in the middle of this fight. Rocker grabs one with the tornado as well. FX late to the party will show up. And it's not the kind of party you want to be late to. He missed all the best action. And they have the damage to take out this tower. Seven seconds now. This tower is gone. This is game. This core is vulnerable. Three seconds to respawn. I don't think there's anything PTP can do. He has the right character to do it. Dark Dominion could peel people off, but he slowed down. Nice use of this smite. And that is game two going to Allegiance. From Lu Bu, the AOE damage being pumped out by a Chaos Protection for the Chargonar. This is a team that can shred groups of people. But we're but. seeing we're seeing their biggest problem from last game. They did not group as a team. They trickled in team fight after team fight and they got caught out time and time and time. So for this team comp to work, they have to actually group. They have to actually communicate and be able to go mm -hmm. in at the same time. I think KO take a lot of poke here. Oh, rest. He tries to escape there, gets pulled back in by the scythe. FX is nearby as well. KO in. And that will be first blood. Rest is gone. Sleepy might have been able to intervene, but the Lubu was there with the knocker from the Red Stallion in the meantime, just to pull people back. Oh, problems though, as PIP is in trouble. He needs to get out of there. PTP will fall. KO will back up the flicker on the Lubu, who will be pulled in by the lasso. Speak of the devil. Beast is still on a rampage. The, just that extra tool is insane. FX is trying to go for the Steel Rocker. We'll be able to pick it up. A nice three-man sight, though, causes trouble. Beast with the brain slip slows down the fights, though. Finds a big stun and shielding for the rest of his team. The Red Stallion knock is deadly. Heals are there from rest, though. That'll provide the healing. FX goes in hard. He's basically gone, but he finds the trade before he falls. And crucially, that's Rocker to fall. Now, Chaos Protection will be spent. FX able to pick up another kill. And they're looking for Sleepy as well. He's split up. He's gone. The my golem could be picked he up might. here. Bracelets will find the stun. It is successfully secured by Beast. And the kill will come through. That's an overextension from a Lu Boo. 
Schlingby will be caught out down here in the bottom. He's got the two-man smite, though, to keep himself alive. He has so much in the way of lifesteal. He can just stay and take this fight, and that's exactly what he does. PTP will barely escape. The Earth Shatter does come through in the meantime. FX is caught up as he tries to come in. PTP will try and come in as well. Just trying to hold up the fight. This Ephes is here with Death Pro above. Big damage from it. MTS is low. Death's Flurry is negated by the uh, Spectral Iron that gives him so much in the way of lifesteal. MTS will survive as a result. They were already down Lubu we after can. getting caught by Rocker. <laughs> Not my strongest, I'll admit. Yeah. <laughs> does come through. Sage Golem will be secured by Rocker. Dark Dominion will be spent in the meantime by PCP, just giving him a moment to escape. But FX, they know where you are. That push is not the cover you were hoping for. It's like a hedge. Oh, four-man bracelets from Beast! That gives you so much in the way of CC, but the problem is the team is still here to push. Oh, he's got the backup rockers here and alive. Sleepy will barely survive. KO is desperately trying to find this kill and find it. He will, but the problem is Rocker and Rest are still here. Ready to do damage. KO barely escapes now. The Zephyrs is here. Rocker goes down. He does find the trade before he falls, though. A really good fight for Oriental to get back into the game. Mm -hmm. They're only down, what, 1k gold now? They didn't play that fight particularly well either, I felt. They didn't. It was um, just the misplay on Allegiance. This, though, is a great fight. The early initiation with the Dark Dominion does completely secure the kill onto MTS. He does fall rest already down to half HP, and the Death Room buff is here. However, KO may have overextended, and the team's not there to back him up, which is brutal. Sleepy's able to fight the trade, and the man is still going strong. The indoor will keep up res all his cooldowns. I don't think he'll survive this, though, as he's unable to find the trade and will go down. Rocker, in the meantime, though, they're taking advantage of that team fight to be able to secure... A golem in the meantime, and this loop who's overextended. The double impale won't save him. The flicker might, but he has no more mobility tonight. He's gone. Oriental gods just free kills. Well, they might get more. Rocker fully caught up here. He's gone. FX finds one, and that's the crucial rocker down in the early phase of the team fight. PTP will narrowly be able to escape, shrinking back underneath the towers. KO takes his place in the front line. Sleepy almost finds the trade and will be able to do so, but he's already lost the rest of his team. And look at the split. A strong team fight victory there for Oriental Gods. And I've really enjoyed that. However, PTP will be caught out. That's big damage on the burst, though. The Death Room buff finds so much value. And this will be KO picking up two in the back lines. Rest and Sleepy caught out in the meantime. Rest will barely be aligned. Sleepy even lower. He's got the indoor and the shielding as well, but it's not enough. And the I think this is over in favor of Oriental Gods. They find the team fight. Beast is the only person who could find a trade. And he's damn sure he's going to. He's pulled in, though, and the Dark Dominion forces him to react. Grown Death Room buff will chip away at him. He's already spent his bracelets, which means he will fall. That's a complete team wipe. Well, another blink available is the ability blink over on Sleepy, and he might want to spend it in order to engage here, but PTP is doing such a good job holding. The Dark Slayer is very dangerous, though. Sleepy's already engaged. Earth Splitter will go through. Sleepy steals the Dark Slayer. This could be disastrous now, as the rest of the team does fall. The Dark Puff completely turns the face of the fight. Allegiance wipe the defenders, and that is the devastating so they need to engage now before that happens because if they lose a high ground this game is as good as over so that's when they go there's the engage red stallion will find it there's the chaos prediction as well earth splitter finds damage bracelets is a mission to return the stun though mts is very low rocker's already been felled though ko with a double kill sleepy seems to save lives but he's gonna get pecked off as well ko on an absolute rampage in the core of this fight and the death ball strikes again beast is the last player alive because it's just giving them chip, and Allegiance are not handling it well, surprisingly poorly indeed. However, this is good engage. Sleepy will find big damage. Lubu has to commit and commit. He does. In the meantime, they can take a ton of damage. That Earth Splitter does come through. Rocker is the first to fall again. They're successfully able to dive him. Sleepy is very low. KO's looking for the damage, but he goes down first. Rest able to find two. The Lubu calls it a day, desperately trying to get out. He is the only defender to survive. Rocker, the only Allegiance member to fall the res this lubu needs to do something incredible in order to save the fight and he's not there yet the bracelet find the stun beast secures the game and that is fitting as ever beast the player that carried his team to dominant victories in game one and two edges out the game three and the tournament in favor of allegiance